everyone welcome to this free episode of tf it is it's the free one it's the remote one mm. uh, it is me riley i am yeah. joined remote riley your digital riley yeah. i'm uh, you know what i am i'm um i'm the kid from that internet book from 1995 surfing on the keyboard oh yeah 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 you're yeah. like an ai model you're like megan with a three except it's riley with a one <laughs> yeah <laughs> rowanly you must have amnesia you forgot that i'm him <laughs> Um, I want to welcome uh, our esteemed guests. Uh, it is, of course, Alice, Liam, and Roz from the Well, There's Your Problem podcast. How's it going? Oh, doing pretty well. Doing pretty good. How are you? Th yeah. Thanks so much for having me on for the like third time. Yep. So nice to meet all three of you again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Very excited to come on here and talk about the exciting and dynamic world of construction materials. Concrete, have concrete, yeah. <laughs> it's oh, the concrete. Yeah. Oh, but I'm smoking pure brick. I'm smoking that concrete. <laughs> that RAAC shit. I'm talking seeds and stems. <laughs> Very uh, small diameter rebar. Yeah. <laughs> like a number I, two bar. They had to cancel Shrek the musical. I got that small diameter rebars in my crew. Mm. Um, you know, we are, of course, going to be talking about exactly why every building in the UK appears to be falling down very slowly and then all at once. Um, but first, I wanted to do a little, a little news hit. A, a news hit, and hey, you know what? Mm. Maybe doing a fat line of the news. <laughs> well, hey. <laughs> You know what? It might be illegal to do a hit of the news with how this government is going. The UK has effectively banned the um, 1950s practice of whipped cream bikini contests. Yes. Okay. This is the stupidest fucking country in the world. If you, if you weren't aware of mm. this, like the little uh, charges that you use to like power a whipped cream uh, like spray bottle or whatever. That's nitrous yeah. oxide. That's laughing gas. And mm. British people, we love that so much that we are willing to inhale a shitload of it and just leave the little canisters just scattered all over every yeah, surface. Nate off his bike, Brad. Yeah. <laughs> but now, now, no more fun allowed. Even this, like, safe mm. and legal thrill, will now be uh, why just less let safe people uh... illegal thrill. Yeah, but because what's going to happen is like. Some guy in the Netherlands is going to start producing laughing gas in his bathtub. And then, you know, people are still going to do it, but it's going to have whatever was in his bathtub in it. Well, the, well, the problem is, is they're going to do what they've done in some other countries that have banned it, which is they can't actually ban not laughing gas or selling it because it has loads of industrial purposes. So they're going to try and ban selling it to teenagers, but that just won't work because there'll just be some guy buying it in bulk from a catering supplier who sets up a fake catering business who will still sell it to right. teenagers. Yeah, this right. does seem Depending. very difficult to regulate. Just adding <laughs> steps, right, yeah. 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 Plus, I mean, without the nitrous oxide freely available, we are fatally compromising our country's ability to continue appearing in Fast and Furious movies. I know. Uh, that might be yeah. so much the better for you, honestly. <laughs> this is going to completely fuck up the British dental industry, my god. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah, you're gonna have to start going back to the barber and he's gonna give you a stiff shot of whiskey. <laughs> I just start yanking that bitch, yeah. I'm old enough to remember when a previous iteration of this government attempted to ban ketamine because they were worried about uh, you know, people doing it recreationally. So they tried to ban its use medically <laughs> and the British Medical Union kicked up such a fuss about this because they were like, Do you have any understanding of how fucking clinically important <laughs> ketamine is to like all emergency medicine? And then the government were like, No, obviously not. We're all idiots. <laughs> and then they were like, Well, it's very important. I'm just imagining the vets as well, like because of yeah, the yeah. fact that some people somewhere were having fun in a slightly pharmaceutical way. Our country is now powered by twenty four seven insane horse torture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just all you can do now is just shoot a horse in the head, which ironically has created a huge problem with teens getting their hands on revolvers. Oh. <laughs> of course, really, having Britain be kind of powered by twenty four seven horse torture is more of a return to form. That's true. Yeah. That's true. I, I, yeah. Nitrous, nitrous is in this weird space too, where it's like 
it's not mm. a particularly dangerous like obviously it's not great if you just like do it all the time it makes you stupid yeah I i'm sure it can kill you i'm sure someone has like scare stories of the time it just killed them straight mm. you know stone dead mostly it's just an annoying drug and mostly we're just sort of banning it because people don't want to mm. step on the little canisters and it feels a little like there's Oh, we have to do some kind of governance in the sort of dying moments of Tory rule. So why and don't this is we sort of the closest we're gonna get? Legalize right. better drugs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I said this on the Balthazar speedboat we just recorded, and I'll say it again: legalize everything else, Singapore-style punishments for laughing gas. Yeah. <laughs> also, I'll take that. No one would do laughing gas if they had access to better drugs. It's not a good drug. It's no, a bad it's drug. It's a mediocre well, at best. Yeah. Suella Braverman said, The British people are fed up with yobs abusing drugs in public spaces and leaving behind a disgraceful mess for others to clean up. So, so uh, just have more trash cans. There, I fixed yeah, it. Yeah, I was about to say, this is, uh, this is more of a waste collection issue, yeah. We can't fund the bin, man. That costs money. And also, mm. if you have bins, then in the 1990s, the IRA put bombs in them. So now we can't have sure. bins. So yeah, that's don't right. worry about that, everybody. <laughs> People think this is a strategy to bomb the British people, but we are playing the long game. Long after they've forgotten about the IRA, they will be terrorized by the, the scourge of street nature outside capsules. And they'll be knocking one Indiana-based podcast producer off his bike. <laughs> Jerry Adams doing a hit of NOS and, like, uh, having the last laugh after all. Just, like, running down the street My and NOS slipping on 55 with nitrous containers and, like, going in a comical Looney Tunes way rolling down the street, you know? <laughs> so, I want to move on. Your yeah, legs Moving turn on. into a blur. I have one more joke. <laughs> okay, Liam. Okay, yes. Can you imagine, right, some sort of the famous fighting men from Cross the Glen uh, who have modified their rifles after disarmament to shoot laughing gas at the British ar uh, army? I would, like, I would like that very much. I hope that does not uh, forbid you releasing this episode. We're going to visit on the British the one thing they fear the most, dentistry. <laughs> Dad? <laughs> uh, I, for, for, for legal reasons after this, Liam is going to have to be voiced by an actor. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why you got to throw laughing gas at the British Army. They're already a joke. Am I right? Oh. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, <laughs> let's talk about how all of the buildings are falling down. And everyone's blaming everyone else, even though everyone was in government for the whole time that it was happening, because it's been happening for about 40 years, and all anyone's done about it is say, woof, someone should do something about it's, that. It's the classic political scandal in that it is everyone's fault. It is if everyone's you've had a fault. career in anything in politics mm. in the last, you know, lifetime, it's your fault too. Yeah. The uh, material in question is called reinforced aerated autoclaved concrete. And as I'm given to understand it, um, it is kind of trying to save money on concrete by replacing some of the concrete in the concrete with air. Yeah, okay, that famous so construction material. It's seeds and stems of concrete. It's not quite just to save money. There's lots of structural reasons why you would use this material. Um, RAAC, rack, which you know sounds like the sound a parrot makes when the ceiling collapses next to him. Um, Rack yeah, but the uh, the the uh, Rack off me, the, you'd me. in this yes. case you are you're using um, entrained air in the concrete in order to reduce the weight. Uh, that's good if you're building something like a roof, for instance, on a cheap building. Um, you know, because then you don't have to worry as much about the walls. You don't have to worry as much about really any part of the structure. And this this is sort of the idea is we have normal concrete is cement fine aggregate which is sand coarse aggregate which is gravel um you have water you have some kind of admixtures sometime admixtures are just anything that's not those four ingredients um mm. in this case parmesan yeah exactly exactly you put parmesan in that would be uh that would be an admixture um so mm. in this case instead of the conventional concrete what you do you add alumina and you remove the large aggregate from the mixture and then as it's curing, rather than wait for it to cure naturally, you put it in the mold. The mold goes into sort of a narrow gauge rail car. The narrow gauge rail car goes into an autoclave and it gets blasted with high pressure steam for several hours. Out the other end, you get a finished panel, which has instead of big rocks in it, it has big bubbles of air. Um, 
Mm. Right. And it's also faster to make, which is handy. Yes, it is much faster mm. to make. Thank God for that. You're not sitting there waiting for the thing to cure. You can just like blast it through the autoclave, uh, yeah. like the mountain yeah. goats on. Sure. And, and it, then it's it's good. Mm. Yeah, and if you're using it for light duty applications, it's really good material. Um, yeah. Now, that's actually... You blast it with laughing yeah. gas. <laughs> <laughs> Although, that's actually the unreinforced variant. The reinforced variant, you throw you know, a thin gauge rebar in there and that causes a whole host of problems which we'll get into, I guess, in this podcast. Um, so, <laughs> so I'll give you the, the history a little bit. This, there's this kind of concrete, um, as you say, good for holding up roofs in cheap buildings if you're building lots of them quickly. Um, for example, ah. if it's the UK in the 1950s, and you're maybe saying, well, we need lots of buildings built quickly, but I'm sure in the prosperous future, obviously they won't let them just stay there and they'll yeah, this replace be them the, and upgrade them. This won't be yeah. the last time we build anything on this site, certainly. Mm. Look here, this cockney chap needs a house. And this <laughs> fellow here, the boffins over at the concrete company have invented this new material. They're calling it rack. <laughs> if you, I tell you what, I've seen a few racks in my time. <laughs> if you built a house in the 50s, you genuinely could have a bunch of this shitty, crumbly concrete layered and sandwiched in between asbestos. And I think that's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least it's fireproof, mostly. One school yeah. is yeah. unable to get its... Um, uh, rack removed because of all the asbestos around it. Oh, that's oh, yeah. If you got a if you got a drop ceiling of a certain era, there's you're loads of asbestos fucked. above that. So it's like hard the to ones, even get up there and inspect yeah. it because you know you're gonna get asbestosized. For once, <laughs> someone in the UK having difficulty getting their rack removed, and it's not the NHS's fault. <laughs> <laughs> hey yo. So. Uh, basically, this material was used a lot from the 1950s to the 1990s, and um, from the 1990s, evidence came to light that said, hey, this yeah, thing... Yeah, like two guys did a study, and what they discovered was, oh, this shit's real... Hey, like, one uh, of them was crushed to death by a ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the study is stand underneath this ceiling, um, and then... Yeah, see what happens. Two experimenters enter, one experimenter leaves. And, the gov and ever since then, essentially... Governments have been trying to, in the style of, I'd say, Blair and after governance of this country, have been trying to fix a physical problem, mostly by shifting definitions of things around mm. until the problem is on paper fixed and they can congratulate themselves for having done it. Um, yeah, you didn't see any concrete here. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and so I had to give him the old aerated concrete shoes to suppress that study. <laughs> oh yeah, unfortunately yeah. It didn't sink. Yeah, that guy's just floating there on the surface, upside down. <laughs> Still <laughs> as dead. Right? That's, kind of, that's kind of worse, almost. Yeah, he did drown, yeah. but just it was very obvious where where the body yeah. was. So, what happened right, is that a lot of this was put in schools, but not just schools. We'll get to some of that as well. Yeah, because you know, you want to build a school on the cheap, obviously. Right. Yeah. Fuck them kids, Alice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, in Britain, that sentence has a slightly different meaning. <laughs> oh. So basically, what happened was that the is that it had a safe, usable lifespan of thirty years, and the government then had expert advice that even outside of its safe, usable lifespan, it wouldn't pose a risk for some reason. That advice changed in the nineteen nineties, probably when they looked up definitions of the words safe and usable. <laughs> well, it was after the it was after that experiment that got crushed by the concrete beam. <laughs> yeah, the guy was saying, "Yeah, I reckon that's no problem," and then was cut off mid sentence by a concrete ceiling falling <laughs> you hate on him. Hate to see him go that way. <laughs> and and then he was quoted as saying, "Ow, lighter than I expected." <laughs> <laughs> it just so, kind of bonks off. He's just polystyrene. So what happened, right, is that throughout this time, is that in the 1990s, it was like, "Oh God, this stuff is bad," and then everything was classified into how risky it was. And I mean, listen, we had a bunch of stuff in the 90s that we just kind of kicked the can down the road on. All these kids eating beef, don't even worry about it. School's going to fall apart in 20 years, don't even worry about it. And so I feel They're like... tough, they've eaten all that beef. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm really thinking that like a lot of stuff that we just decided in the 90s, I say we, uh, would keep for 30 years is now no longer keeping. I was about to say, it's mm. been about 30 years. <laughs> Yeah, they're coming down. Specifically, what happened is the, the it was determined that the there was like more and less risky buildings, depending on how much they had and where it was. Mm. And so they've they kind of said, okay, well, we'll try and replace the risky ones. And the reason that this became a scandal all at once 
is that a low risk building fell fell a low risk yeah, building fell, fell down fell. <laughs> yeah uh oh oh no yeah can I also say how great it is that in my quest to become a stand-up comedian, I am now on a podcast discussing the tensile strength of different kinds of concrete. Well, <laughs> what a long, strange <laughs> trip. Having a slightly been. existential <laughs> moment. And I'm actually having fun, but it's it's a crazy turn of events. I, I so, was at the doctor's today, and I had to explain what I do for a living in excruciating fucking detail. And uh, having to explain, oh, yeah. I take this math degree and this economics degree, and then I wipe my ass with them. Uh, it was a pretty humbling experience. And, like, and I think that's your problem, yeah. sir. <laughs> Same thing. Roz, you've said to me in messages that it seems like it's only a problem in the UK, this stuff. Yeah. And apparently that's because the UK is so wet. Because it's, it's like concrete, but you can't really get it wet. Well, so there's, there's, ah. there's a couple things going on here. Um, you know, so this, you take this aerated, um, uh, what autoclave concrete, right? And one thing people wanted to do is they wanted to make it behave like reinforced concrete. Reinforced concrete is essentially you add steel bars to concrete so you can make the concrete do things it doesn't want to do, like be in tension. Um, sure. Now, with right. this aerated concrete and the air, and trained air bubbles in there, um, it's hard to get the rebar to have a good grip on the concrete inside. Uh, so, you know, it'll just sort of slide out the ends, right? So what this means is you wind up with um, this rebar has to be covered in some kind of coating, uh, which is in the old days, it was latex. Starting in the 90s, it was uh, bitumen, I believe, which is, um, you know, mm. apparently a little worse. Apparently the quality got worse in the 90s. Um, cool. So not um, only do yeah. we keep using the stuff, we actually got worse at making. Yeah. So uh, one, yeah. one of the big problems which we've had uh, with this... Um, RAAC is that it fails very suddenly without warning because the rebar does not have oh, <laughs> it does not have a good grip. It's like the sub. Yeah. It's like the Titanic sub. Yes. <laughs> it failed very suddenly. The rebar yeah, does yeah, not yeah. have a good grip on the concrete. So when um, you know, in, in ordinary reinforced concrete, there's a lot of warning before something fails. The crack gets bigger and bigger and bigger over the course of weeks. And you look at it and you say, fuck, we should do something about that, huh? Um, with this, or in Britain, you look at it and you go, nah, yeah, probably fine. Probably fine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are we uh, going to do? Spend money on it? <laughs> I, and I tell you again, fuck them kids and fuck them sick people. And this, you want me to spend money on this concrete so it don't <laughs> crush some kids to death? Where are we fucking uh, from? Yeah. <laughs> they say something to the effect of we'll spend what we need to spend and now they're already like, nah, nah hey, hey, eight pounds. That's what you get. Divvy it up amongst yourselves. We will yourselves. think about We'll think about looking at spending what we need to spend. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we'll think it, about spending as much as we can so... Try to yeah. not go to a crumbly school. Yeah, yeah, so... We'll pay KPMG 15 billion pounds to tell us how much we need to spend, and then we won't spend any of it. So this <laughs> thing can go basically from hairline fracture to total collapse uh, very suddenly without warning. Um, you know, it's it's okay. not... Oh, good. It's not super great, um, you know, and this is why in countries where it's used extensively, like, let's say, Japan, uh, they just mm -hmm. tend to tear buildings down after 30 years. Um... <laughs> You know, so it's, it's a, a, a nice <laughs> boost for a sort of functional construction and demolition industry, which oh, we just yeah. don't do. Um, yeah, exactly. You know, well, I, I think there's some merit in saying, well, we'll make, have a building last 100 years, but then you still have to do maintenance, which no one likes doing building maintenance. I believe me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is so this is essentially where the crisis was, as we said. Um, I have a couple quotes here from trade magazines because everyone knows I love reading yeah, you, trade publications oh, yeah. because they're not... You're in, like, yeah. concrete quarterly. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So, Riley, you won't get this, but this is actually a very, like, have I got news for you ass segment where they would have at the end, they would always have, like, a reading from... It'd be like the guest publication would be something really insane, like, concrete quarterly. <laughs> well, London it was Review actually of Aggregates, funny. yeah. One of yeah. the better segments. Oh, I like yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, so this is from building.co.uk, the building. <laughs> <laughs> That's like if I was making up my qualifications as a builder, and it'd be like, where did you get that from? And I'd be like, uh, building.co.uk. <laughs> yeah, building.co.uk, you may already be in one. Yes, of course. <laughs> That's right. The building so is coming from inside the house. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so, this is this is the quote. Mike Hughes, director of Birmingham, no Birmingham-based structural investigation company Bytas, told uh, said Bite that in ass? identifying 
Identifying schools. <laughs> yeah, Bur Birmingham based uh, company Bysass. Yeah. That identifying problems in schools was likely to be only the beginning of the repairs needed, noting that buildings with large flat roofs, such as retail developments, hospitals, and the Ministry of Defense, are among other sites uh -oh. where Iraq has been widely used. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thinking any kind of prefab building. Meeting in the Kremlin right now. We are going to destroy the British Ministry of Defense. But how? Surely they have defenses. No, no. We will just wait. <laughs> <laughs> we do nothing. That is the beauty of the plan. <laughs> you said, Rack could be anywhere. It has less to do with the type of buildings, more to do about with the era in which they were built. The main risk factor is flat roofs. And he also warned that he's seen an increase in potentially unqualified surveyors. Milo, you're going to love this offering their services mm. on social media. Quote, there seem to be a lot of contractors coming out of the woodwork as a way to generate extra workload for themselves. Cowboy builders. They're at, they're at the start and at the end. Oh. They're Britain's eternal this, presence. This is oh, such oh, a, um, a particular <laughs> British cottage industry beyond the cowboy builder, but specifically the, the cowboy surveyor. Oh. So mm. um, back in the day, uh, maybe about 10, 15 years ago, they brought in these... Um, green energy certifications that every commercial building has to have and basically like anyone could do like a one day course to become a green energy surveyor <laughs> and every building every commercial building that was rented had to have one done like every year where they'd come around and just say like oh you've got a radiator that's a point in the minus oh you are oh, you using gas are you oh that's a minus oh you've got a solar panel that's a plus um and all of these guys were just like dudes from the town who like sold herbalife <laughs> and then worked out that this is because like the minimum payment was like 250 quid to turn up for half an hour and fill out like a checkboard list um and so i imagine this is a similar vibe good gig if you can get it that's now, terrific admittedly that's... it is not super difficult to figure out if something is rack right because what you do is you get a screwdriver and you get a hammer and you put the screwdriver mm -hmm. next to the concrete right and you tap it with the hammer. And if it bounces off, that's regular concrete. If it digs in and p p pulls the off a chip... The entire ceiling collapses on top of you. The entire ceiling collapses, that's right. Yeah. You, you've died a valiant death. <laughs> yep. Every survey, it's like a it's bee. Right. You go to Builders Valhalla, or at yeah. least the closely related <laughs> Surveyors Valhalla. Surveyors Valhalla, Surveyor 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 yeah. Surveyor. yeah. What we're Welcome, son. Everything's cashing out. <laughs> How many sugars you want in that tea? Three or eight? <laughs> Surve Surveyors Valhalla, very precisely measured. I was about to Sorry, say, also, I just love the idea gigantic that... transit in the middle of the perfectly uh, level yeah. Valhalla. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love the idea that to do to, t to do this test for rack, you can only find it once, then you die like a bee. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, yeah, sort of yeah. one and done deal, bud. It's like. The world's luckiest, it's like Looper, like the rack surveyor, like eventually you just die. Yeah, yeah the thin, gray, bubbly line. That's why I got out of the industry. Yeah. <laughs> the canary in the school. <laughs> so, but it's not just schools that are made of this material, as I alluded to. Also, apparently the MOD, uh, but as awesome. well as a lot of hospitals, which is great. Um, mm. So the health minister... Right. Um, said that uh, upwards of 34 hospital buildings in England were at risk. A bunch of these were also due to be, quote-unquote, rebuilt in this their for uh -huh. the government's 40 new hospitals program. So now it's going to be like, no, 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 the 40 new hospitals program, that's, it, it was all just minor renovations. It's like, oh, no, no, that's the RAC recovery fund now. And it's just yeah. it's the same small part of insufficient money that around. just yeah. gets a yeah. different name each time. Wow, that's frustrating. Your new hospital is just like the porter cabins in the parking of the old hospital. Mm -hmm. I, I, Say what you like about porter cabins, no concrete. I, I, I won't say what I like about porter cabins, I, I will be honest with you. I, I just, You've been warned. I had a look around Google Maps at some of these buildings. They're all like one or two story buildings, and re, you know, with big, big, huge flat roofs. And it's like, well, you know, replacing the flat roof on that thing, replacing all the concrete, that's like replacing most of the building. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. fortunately, we're not going to do it. Yeah, at least, oh, well, at least it's both go. expensive and difficult. Yeah. It's very fun, though, when the British government occasionally boxes itself into a real corner, because normally the things that they won't do in terms of like managing the decline or solving the problems are things which they can sort of get away with continuing to not do. Mm. But when schools start falling in on top of children, I think that's that's really going to be the unstoppable force meeting the immovable yeah. object. 
Yeah, yeah people kind of take that, that personally, being yeah. snowflakes that They're, they are. Yeah, we're not we're not Americans. I tell you what, when <laughs> British children start dying at school, I think a few questions might be asked. No, we prefer them to die of like social neglect outside of school. I was about exactly. to say here here in the United States, we can have a school shooting in a brand new beautiful school. Exactly. Um, yeah. <laughs> you just hose like, it it's a down. Different culture. Yeah. 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 You like wash all of the dead kids out of it, and the next classes are ready to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's because it's made out of that hard concrete. Yeah, exactly. You shoot a rack school, and then the ceiling falls in on top of the shooter. Incident over. Yeah. <laughs> basically, because, Ellis, what you're describing with an American school is like Hercules cleaning the Augean stables. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um. So. You can't do a school shooting in the UK, son. Those schools are a death trap. Yeah. <laughs> we're building we're building all new schools with the drain in the floor of every classroom. <laughs> <laughs> One hospital boss referred to the situation as a ticking time bomb for their building, and managers have resorted to providing training to cleaning staff to spot structural decay. So they're not getting oh, this is just so another not... I'm ringing the just use people from the town bell. Right. Because it's like, well, we can't get surveyors because they're expensive. We can't rebuild it, obviously, mm. because only 40 hospitals get to rebuild it. All of them are dead now as well. <laughs> um, and so I suppose what we're going to have to do is ask the, the janitorial staff to kind of do some surveying on the side. They're working. This isn't their job. They're not trained. What the fuck? Mm. This used what, to be my job. Mate? I used to do this. It's I know. not hard to get someone in for an afternoon to look at the thing. I mean... Well, it is when every surveyor in, in the country is like working on this, I guess. I guess so. It might take four or five so afternoons. We have like five surveyors because we don't hire anyone or train anyone to do incredible. anything in this country. Just anymore. incredible. They should bring me over. I'll do it. <laughs> One of the, well, like a mercenary. A yeah, mercenary exactly. surveyor mm. inspector guy, yeah. Sort of hire like me the, the Wagner group of like inspections. Hire me from my classified ad in the back of uh, Engineer of Fortune magazine. Uh, I don't read that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh no! <laughs> I tell you what, I looked at a few flat concrete roofs in Angola. Really nasty stuff. <laughs> One of anyway, I can't go back to Joburg. Some unpleasant mistake. <laughs> I can't go back to Joburg, or I'm going to get collapsed on. Uh, so one yeah. hospital in Cambridge has had to actually designate certain surgery um, operating theaters as not being able to handle obese patients because the ground will fall Collapse. off. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> That's very yeah. funny. That's yeah. amazing. Okay. So we're in, this is very much Fat like- phobic yeah. concrete. We're, we're we're there we go. <laughs> we're just in hell. Yeah. No, you're not in hell. We are in hell. Yeah, but I'm on this <laughs> podcast, so yeah. I'm, I'm there with you, bud. Think of it like so they, that. Yeah. So obese patients in, in this one in a Hinchingbrook Hospital in Cambridgeshire can only have surgery on ground floors because because <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're, they're just go gonna go through, through, the, floor, go through floor. the floor. Yeah. yeah. In a sort of comedic fucking Laurel and Hardy type <laughs> scenario. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you know, Christ. I've I've often been mad at the NHS for like putting off surgery for me because I'm too fat. Right. If I got mm. in and I fell through the floor Can of the operating theater, extremely I embarrassing. Would, I would immediately understand why they were yeah. hesitant. I'm sorry, darling. As much as we'd like to, we can't put naturals on you that big. You're going to crash through the floor of the operating theater. <laughs> You'll have to go to a country with better reinforced hospitals, like the Netherlands. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. It looks like Vernon K will never be yours. So, what does it take now? <laughs> What does it take oh, to remove? Kay's big natural. <laughs> big, juicy naturals. I tell you what, this nightclub in Bolton must be very well reinforced. Because we've got some very well endowed ladies out on the floor tonight. Sorry, we were talking about Vernon Kay. Jeremy Vine's here with me. We were talking about Vernon Kay before the recording. We've been watching Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> No. Come on, lad. No, that's a call, Milo. That's a call forward. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Well, so very easy to escape from a prison made out of uh, made out of rag. Then again, very <laughs> easy to escape from a British wall. prison anyway. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. The warden. The warden pulls the poster off the wall, and then the entire prison just collapses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I guess I love my prison spell like my Jenga towers. So when where basically where this stuff is found, a enormously expensive roof replacement will be required and that some buildings will have to be just completely knocked down. This is also this is from the assessment in building.co.uk. Hmm. Um, will we replace them with like high quality new buildings made out of materials that last? That's if you look at anything that gets built in Britain recently, it seems to be um no. 
That won't I, happen. Yeah, yeah. everything is going to be say. student flats. They're just going to be doing like surgeries in the corridors of student flats. Maybe we could use yeah. a composite steel deck like a normal person. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. I'm afraid paper is all we can afford here in Britain. Yeah. <laughs> it's Japanese style hospital. <laughs> the show yeah, screen hospital. Yeah. yeah, you go through the floor. I'll go through the timeline a little bit as well. Right. So as I said earlier, between the 50s and the 90s, uh, they were building this stuff because in the 1950s, you have to deal with the um, recovery from the war, rebuilding the entire country, the baby boom, and so on. Huge amounts of infrastructure needs to be created. And uh, again, the, like, I, I think maybe this is a question for Roz, actually. Like, why is, what's the sense in building a, a major bit of infrastructure with the understanding that it's not going to be permanent? I mean... I think a lot of people's sense is that when there's a hospital, that hospital is just there forever. But that's not necessarily the case. Well, a lot of these buildings are sort of they seemed at least to me to be like one and two story structures. They're not like you're not looking at something that I think is intended to be. This is the community's hospital forever. It's like this is how we get a modern building put up in the shortest time possible. And probably 30 years from now, we we will need something bigger. We can build something that's more permanent, um, you know, but when you're when you're sort of dealing with these sorts of mass produced buildings uh you're not necessarily you know going to say we're going to use the world's greatest materials when the urgent need is for just a building to exist oh, sure. uh, the other thing is of course this is a very modern high-tech material at the time i think it was developed in the 30s in sweden um by some company with an absolutely unpronounceable name um <laughs> you know and yeah, the italian swedish concrete company. exactly um <laughs> And so this is sort of we're sort of in the early days of reinforced concrete in general, not that early, but a lot of the failure modes had not necessarily been investigated too thoroughly yet because most reinforced concrete structures in the 50s were at most 40 years old. Um, so, you know, no one, no one figured out that, oh, maybe if we put steel inside concrete where we can't ever get at the steel ever again forever there might be some problems with that eventually. Um, <laughs> of course, it's worth saying as well, right? Like, if you're going to school at a school that is from the 1600s, that building is still sort of fine. Yes, uh, yeah. yes, because sure. uh, that's all, a lot of that is uh, pretty easy to maintain materials. I mean, not easy in the sense that they are physically easy to do, but you can you can do that with, like, hand tools. You can do that with laborers. Uh, as opposed to something like reinforced concrete, where all of a sudden, even trying to find the problem becomes a it's huge, out. huge issue. You know, mm. um, you know. So you don't have the necessarily the same kind of um, I hate to say traditional knowledge about how to maintain the building, but you know, uh, if you you can you can put back together a brick building or a stone building, you know, uh, fairly easily. Uh, the problems are fairly visible fairly early on. Uh, with reinforced concrete, suddenly there's all kinds of these other problems that show up with like just the uh, the the fact that you can't access where the deterioration is happening. Well, as residents of regional Russian apartment buildings are often become suddenly oh, aware boy. when their entire <laughs> apartment block falls down in its own footprint, 9-11 style, <laughs> just on a Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> This happened, right? So we have all this, as we say, we have temporary bits of infrastructure and then the whole concept of Britain being a place that, for example, will just, the Department of Education will build a school kind of falls apart, right? Yeah, I mean, and, we were joking about like everything in Britain being done in porter cabins, but it really does feel like everything in this country is like built on a temporary basis. We'll just get around it's, never because we don't care anymore, yeah, yeah. right? It's built on a temporary basis until the 1990s when it all got farmed out to the, to the private sector who then started mm. building things that were, well, to be perfectly honest, deceptive and overpriced. Uh, so in 1994... What? No! In 19 British government private contracts being not good value for money? So in, in 94, uh, that's when the concerns about RAC began to appear. And then in 96, um, that's when the first cracking and corrosion was found in mm. planks that had been designed mm. earlier. So we have known about this for uh, quite some time. Oh, say. it's the previous Tory administration. The yeah. <laughs> Free Blair. Yeah. Mm. But the, I mean, think about this: every every government of that time has had a lot of other stuff. On. I mean, There's they had to, to invade do, right. Iraq. 
they had to invade Afghanistan. This is like, you know, they it's had... fairly low down the list. It's not a sexy issue to be like, hey, is this That's concrete going to like crush all the kids? They had you to know? hug all those hoodies. Yeah, exactly. No, no one so, likes it when you make a big deal about maintaining the roof, even though you got to maintain that roof. Or right. you have, I don't care what your building's made out of. You don't maintain that roofing membrane. You're going to have problems. This then just happens to be uniquely get bad. <laughs> on the on the platform of like he maintained the roof. He kept us out of war with roof. Britain's one surveyor has been walking back from his job of repairing Pristina Airport after the Yugoslav Wars of the <laughs> 90s and has just returned and gone, right, lads, what about that rat concrete you were all going on about in the early 90s? <laughs> no. Um, and what and the Blair came in and there was actually a great deal of money invested in school building. Um, however... All of that money was invested via PFI, so a huge amount of that I just money pissed half of it up the wall. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, yeah. A huge amount of that money, thus compromising the concrete, yeah, <laughs> went yeah. to you know private islands. Um, you know what it was? Mm. It was essentially the whole. It's a series of Lyle Landleys just just fucking us repeatedly. Lyle's Landley. Ly Ly now look, I may have spent some of that money you gave me on my private island, but rest assured 100% of the money was spent on facilities for children. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, this scheme was called Building Schools for the Future. Um, and they, they did rebuild several hundred schools, but um, huge amounts, uh, there was huge amounts of reliance on external consultants, basically Neom style. Oh, like, right. Instead of just oh, building yeah. schools Again, it, by just by trying to farm this out to the private sector, huge amounts of third parties need to be brought in uh, at enormous expense. First, we got how we got that big school that was a dodecahedron. <laughs> yeah, first you got to write up a contract that specifies in a philosophical how the, how manner what a school is. Right. <laughs> mm. Mm. But additionally, mm. right, that means all of the maintenance of those schools is also carried on through the PFI contract, which means that maintaining any school built through the Building Schools for the Future program is also insanely expensive because it had to be farmed out to the private sector for some reason. Look, I think if you're going to have these, you know, Saudi-style uh, procurement contracts, they should also have some Saudi-style suitcase clauses. <laughs> I think, you know, some of these guys should be invited to a special dinner at the embassy. Yeah. So, <laughs> a guy moonwalks out of an embassy and then a bunch of schools get, like, built back up again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they just flew together. Yeah. Crazy. Um, so essentially what happened is that the, the coalition then said, okay, we're not going to continue this, um, this, uh, this sort of Blair era program where we piss an enormous amount of money up the walls versus the number of schools that are built. Like there's yeah, too much. You don't have any money to piss away. <laughs> sure. It's like there's austerity now. Yeah, indeed. Mm. And so there's no, so basically instead of pissing huge amounts of money up the wall to mostly to private contractors to build a small number of schools. The conservative government um, essentially stopped pissing any money up the wall on schools in general, and then <laughs> no was, schools yeah. were built. It was like the no piss years, yeah. 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 Mm. Um, because, and, and Michael Gove, you know, he said, it, it's, it's strange, right? Where he says, oh, the uh, building schools for the future was plagued by massive overspends, tragic delays, botched construction projects, and needless bureaucracy. And he was right. It's just the answer wasn't to then cease all school building altogether. Sure. I, lo I love Probably. how, like, mm. you know, I, it, in the UK and the US, you know, we've gotten really bad at building just really simple things like you school building. It. Yeah, it's just like, well, this is this is basically a box with classrooms in it. Oh, that's too hard. Can't do that. <laughs> what if we just used fucking modular homes to do it? Mm. <laughs> yeah, gotta... all of your kids are, like, going to school in those, like, Yugoslav kiosks they used to sell hot dogs out of. Your, your children have Pretty been containerized. reference that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, the, what they did do, right, is they brought in something called the School Rebuilding Program, but it only aimed to rebuild or repair 50 schools a year, versus 38% I mean, of the school buildings in all of Britain passed their, their, their life at the time yeah. of, like, 2050. Okay, How bad. many schools are there in, like, the country overall? Do, you, do we know that offhand? It's like... More than fucking 50. I, I assume so. So it's 32,226 times uh, 0.38. So that's 12,045.88 schools that are um, past usable life. Okay, I'm gonna yeah, There's this one school yeah. where 12% of it is fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, that actually is quite the, the case, right? Where a bunch of schools just didn't have this in them. 
or some of them had only a little bit. But it's very hard to know because, mm. as you alluded to earlier, Roz, it's incredibly hard to find. And so it's kind of Schrodinger's cat. But instead of a hammer falling and killing the cat, whether the um, isotope decays or not, what happens is it falls and kills your son. Yes. Yes. Ah. Yeah. Schrodinger's every school child in Britain, yeah. and the box they're in is a school. Oh, and the like question them. is will the school fall on top of the monarch? Don't like them odds. The question is, I mean, you would think someone would be able to go into a back room and find the plans for the school, but, you know, as I've alluded to on, well, there's your problem, usually that's been stored underneath a leaky radiator for 40 years, and the, the plans are useless. Um, so before we go on, though, I just want to say, I'm, I've taken 12,245.88, I am subtracting 50 from that, it's still quite a lot. Oh, oh is a it? Number oh, still. oh, dear. It's at least 6,000, I reckon, I mean, I'm not a mathematician, but... Um, it is still quite a few schools. Um, <laughs> so, but they've been, the government has now been inspecting schools for this stuff since 2017. And this is quite a bit of where the great British government tradition of buck passing and definition fudging really, really takes off. And so basically in 2018, a school in Kent fell down, but this was more than 20 years after the original report. So no one mm. still did anything. Uh, right. So in a way, it's fine. Yeah. Well, it's no long. It can't fall what down. Twenty years. One school fell down. Pretty good. Yeah, that's that's, that's not bad at that's all. That's not yeah. too bad. I like. I like the. I like the mods. It can't yeah. fall down more. Exactly. That's right now, that's one less school to worry about. <laughs> it's kind of liberating in a way. Once the school has fallen down, you realize not so bad. Oh, I wasn't in there. Don't have to worry about it. Right. Take exactly. that one off the list. Yeah. <laughs> mm. yeah. As long as they fall down at the weekend, basically fine. <laughs> Can we just schedule when they fall down? <laughs> so um, this is when then buck passing begins. Ah. Because no one gets given any extra money, but everyone is told that they have to do it. So basically, everyone is told to take steps to confirm the safety of the buildings, but no one's given any money to do it. And it falls to local authorities, which are already, and this is going to be um, an episode that comes out in a little while, uh, basically now mm. get addicted to gambling to what? try to cover <laughs> all of their debts. Fun. Yeah. Oh, oh no. If the video poker machine doesn't come up in our favor, then the then the, the gonna fuck crush them your kids, I guess. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and you know, again, schools and local authorities for the next several years are told you should replace the planks. You should replace the planks. There will be no money to replace the planks. Yeah. This is also why the Secretary of Education got caught in a hot mic saying that everyone else but her had been sitting on their ass doing nothing. Uh, and sort of demanding that we uh, say thank you to her for, you know, doing a bloody good job. Well, it's, it, that was that was such a funny gaffe because it was like one of the few where people were like, oh, how how embarrassing for her. And it's like, how embarrassing for the entire system that no one has done. Like, why, why again are we being encouraged to care about one government minister being rude off mic? Because it was <laughs> when, so like uh, people who enjoy politics as a show. To go like, this yeah. is just like the thick of it. This is like the best day on the internet I remember in a minute. Um, mm. Because, you know, uh, it's like teachers said a bad word. Right. It, uh, to mm. be clear, this is not a small job, right? This is a big job. This is not like an ordinary roofing job where it's like, you know, you go in with some, you know, EPDM or something like that and you go <laughs> all over uh, new roof membrane. This is you're actually it. physically lifting up. You're, you're lifting out all of the structural components of the roof oh, sure. and replacing them with new structural components, which need to be engineered differently, which means you may have to worry about the walls, the columns, the so on and so forth. This is like not something that's, you know, simple and easy. This is something where you need to get like engineers involved. You have to develop, you know, you have to thoroughly inspect the entire building to and, and, and determine if that you need reinforcements because you're going to inevitably be putting on a heavier roof at the end of all of this. So you got to make sure the rest of the building can take it. So, you know, this is like not not like something that you could reasonably expect to be able to do like over a weekend. You know, this is this is a months or years long process to Would to you like to know happen. on that basis <laughs> how long how much notice the government gave schools that they had to like do something about this urgently? Eight days. <laughs> yeah, it was it was seventy two hours. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was it was a few days right before they started back. Yeah. I'll tell you what it specifically was. It was a long weekend. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, could you please uh, replace fix the whole the fucking entire thing, r- asshole? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I th- <laughs> this is this is just the basis of a, like a snobs v slobs comedy where it's like. Your frat house is getting torn down on Monday morning unless you can come up with the $50,000 you owe the university. And they're like, oh boy, thank God the dodgeball competition is this weekend. <laughs> but, 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 you say, as you say, it's a huge job and it's one that no one has done because even though it's incredibly necessary and will be much more expensive to just fix mm. later when all the stuff starts falling down, is that it was just not an option to do. And this is why I want to go back to the Jillian Keegan thing, actually, Education Secretary. Mm-hmm. Um, with her hot mic moment, as you say, Alice, it is it is sort of kind of reprehensible that, the, th- woman. that the thing about this is, yo, oh, teacher said a bad word because... Yeah, the news, yeah. the news. Yeah, I love the, the news. I love yeah, the like... news is a show. It's not connected to anything. But mm-hmm. the, the, what I want to go yeah. back to on that is Much that... Much like the walls and roofs of school. <laughs> yeah. Is that Jillian Keegan... <laughs> actually did fail at doing the actual job of a minister of the British state, which is to sell austerity and manage decline. You're not supposed to say everyone else has been sitting on their asses. You're supposed to reassure everyone that the crumbling schools are normal and that something will be done and that nobody notices when you just rename one pot of money that mostly just goes to the private sector anyway into something else. But ultimately, there is really no, say, for example, giant school building program. That's what she failed to do. It doesn't matter that well, she swore. There's no magical school yeah. tree. Yeah, because that, that was what I found perverse about it, because I was like, no, I, I actually like this woman slightly more now. I mean, it was a low base starting point, but at that, at that stage, I was like, you know what? Some honesty <laughs> from a government minister. That's the first time I've seen that in a while. Uh, so the, by 2019, um, the, the civil servants, if not the ministers, the Department for Education, recommended that you had to, if to, in order to get this done within the decade before they start falling down, you'll have to basically replace 400 schools a year. So slightly more than 50, I think. Easy peasy. Hmm. When do we start? Yeah, and, yeah, and they, they're going to keep finding it in new places too. As of an yeah. hour ago, they just like, they found it in a bunch of universities as well. And theaters. So they're gonna have to, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Shrek the Musical is canceled. I saw that. <laughs> As of an hour ago, Jacob Rees Mogg collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the, this scandal has taken Shrek the musical from our nation. Is there no more that we can suffer? Right. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Mandelson. The butter has seeped into your staircase and it's now structurally <laughs> unsound. It could end up killing people who aren't some kind of Russian dissident. <laughs> oh. The uh, recommended spend was £5.3 billion pounds per year. Uh, and then uh, less, and that's about thirteen percent of a Matt, Han- Matt Hancock's pub landlord. <laughs> if you're following along at home, <laughs> and, just in terms you'll be able to understand. So, uh, whereas what was actually spent was two point three, so not that's, enough. No, 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 not enough. But also, I- I'm sure even less than not enough because they spent two point three billion pounds in the way that the British government spends two point three billion pounds, which is like actually a hundred grand of it went into a school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, after 2020, um, the, edu- the Department for Education released guidance for school workers on how to identify RAC, because once again... Plunge this screwdriver into it and yeah. prepare to meet thy god. <laughs> yeah, and pray. Um, it's like testing if a landmine yeah, is alive right? when you stepped on yeah. it. Well, all you can do is out, take baby. your foot off it and hope. <laughs> what you have to do is herd a flock of sheep into the school and... <laughs> <laughs> so, the, but Jeff Barton, the general secretary of uh, the Association of School and College Leaders, uh, told the BBC, I'm quoting here, that while building schools for the future was expensive and overambitious and bureaucratic, it was saying something important that the nation's schools needed to be refurbished, which is true. It's just, I don't know if we had to give so much of the money to, like, capita. Uh, and then this is the quote that, that really got to me. It says, what we've got today in some of these schools is head teachers scrambling around trying to identify concrete well, they should be focusing on children's learning and development. So everyone's just a surveyor now, because if you're not, you might die. Yes. I love, I love the take the people from the town approach. Brit- Brittany. Teachers, you have been issued a screwdriver and a hammer. When the person in front of you drops the screwdriver, you pick it up and you keep hammering the concrete. <laughs> and the worst part is, all of the money that they need to spend now to replace that concrete, most of those schools have already spent on vape detectors. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, the, oh, yeah, they don't have dip happens? in your country, do they? Uh, so. Only vape. Wow. Actually, no, dip is becoming surprisingly popular now. Really? The teens are buying it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because vape detectors keep... You can't have a dip detector in a bathroom. <laughs> you can't. Oh, yeah. Spit in my mouth! Spit in my mouth to figure oh. out if you can go back to class. <laughs> you'd, have, you'd have to bring back the official school pedophile to check the inside of children's mouth. <laughs> the school spittoon. Or is there also known PE teachers? Yeah. So, <laughs> I, wanted, I, w- I want to go further with this, as, with this as well, right? Because usually what happens, we saw this with some things in COVID, is that... When there is a when there is a real disaster where the conservative party detects that, oh, we actually do have to do something now or we'll get kicked out of office, they will then do it. Right. They they were sort of buffaloed into doing furlough, even though that sort of ended up supporting a lot of uh, basically a lot of businesses as well. Um, they did things. They, their social problems were solved during COVID because they sort of had to be or things would fall apart. They were dragged and membership into membership were furious about yeah, it. Yeah, they've never yeah. forgiven them. Yeah, and, no. But now, right, that they know that they're basically going to be out, they're just saying, oh yeah, um, uh, this, is, this is, is, is astonishing. Jeremy Hunt has said, we will spend what it takes to make sure children can go back to school safely, but then clarified later that this would not come from any additional funds. So, okay. fuck them kids. Oh, wow. we'll, we'll spend what it takes to make sure children are safe at school as long as how much it takes is nothing. So we're kind of, it's a big roll of the dice that it's nothing. It's very, and if it's nothing, we'll be fine. Looking into it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very strongly. We're going to figure so, out someone else to fuck over in order to get the kids into school. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, no, it's what we're going to do is we're going to make schools in like disused high streets. We're going we're gonna to have like, Instead of ha- the, the old vape shop or, you know, the, the, the pound land or whatever. They're oh, all charter school. The old vape shop. Vape shop. Vape shop. It's yeah, charter they're, school they're gonna, time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're just going to do, we're going to, schooling is going to happen in blighted town centers. Yeah. All the, all the o- American. Old man gesturing at a high street full of porter cabins going, in my day, this were all vape shops and Turkish barbers. <laughs> um, you see that porter cabin over there? That was the nightclub where Vernon K met an FHMI Street, honey. We're gonna we're gonna <laughs> repurpose all the American candy stores. Ah, yes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, so, uh, basically, uh, it, it, if also if you have to then, if you're a school and now you have to like evacuate your students to another site so they can still bewilder. Well, like, sco- students in Britain have barely been in schools in Britain in the last five years. Oh yeah. Um. Mm. And they're not getting any extra support for like for porta cabins. You still have to buy those from your existing budget. Basically, the crisis is being met with the government saying, "Wow, that sure does look difficult. Good luck." <laughs> yeah, and sometimes I don't recall saying "good luck." <laughs> but then, you know, it, this this seems, of course, like a moment of opportunity for the Labour Party, uh, which nah, has also don't said, find a way to ruin this. Uh, well, the savvy and nimble yeah. Labour Party mm. of Sir Keir Starmer QC. Yeah, well, West Streeting has gone on and said, we don't know the size of the bill yet, so we're not going to commit to fixing all the schools. So no matter what <laughs> oh, okay. happens, oh, that's you cannot vile. vote. It is impossible in Britain, if you want to vote for one of the major two parties, to vote for the schools not falling down. Both parties have agreed that at least some schools should be falling down. Yeah, Amazing. I I don't even know what to say to that. You know, that that's kind of like um, I think a very basic part of society is that um, kids have to go to school fall down, go you know, to kid exactly. jail or kid jails must remain strong. There's a reason why the expression safe as houses exists. Um, mm. You know, yeah. b- usually buildings do not just fall down. And, you know, it's just uh, the government's completely abdicated its responsibility to ensure that the, the building your kid is mandated to spend most of the day in uh, will or will not fall down. <laughs> mm. We're taking a Takeshi's Castle approach to education, yeah. which I think is a very interesting gambit. Only the toughest children will survive. <laughs> Only the ones built like that Australian road safety ad with the man who's built to survive car crashes. <laughs> like children who are genetically predisposed predisposed to have no neck and like weird water sacks around their organs. Well, you got to be so, like the you got to be like the shortest kid in class so that when the roof falls mm. down it's cushioned by the skulls of all the other mm-hmm. kids. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, what, yeah. what's happened as well? Starmer, as well as Streeting, was asked about this directly, as was like Mc, McFadden. Like tons of people have been asked about this, and they have all repeated in lockstep that they cannot commit to repairing all the schools. 
But Starmer's answer was probably the weirdest and most evasive, where when asked, mm -hmm. are you going to fix all of the schools? Starmer said, we promise a different mindset and a serious long-term plan to fix all the fundamentals. As the director of a public service, I knew that not just money, but reform was also important. How are you going to reform the schools into not falling down? I was about to start up with of schools being made out of aero chocolate <laughs> is something which is in desperate need of reform. I think a lot of teachers need to take a long, hard look at themselves and say, should I be teaching inside this big aero chocolate bar? <laughs> I think the answer is no, and the solution is not just more government spending, it's also one about taking up the gorilla mindset inside schools <laughs> and considering teaching in the jungle. We're gonna write. We're gonna write the concrete panels a sternly worded letter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'll teach yeah. him. You can't fall down. That's illegal. <laughs> so we'll sue you. This has come back to. In a, there was a recent poll done by YouGov asking who would make the better chancellor, with the conservatives Jeremy Hunt pulling seventeen percent, uh, Labour's Rachel Reeves pulling fourteen percent, and then Britain's future chancellor don't know posting sixty nine percent. Hilarious. I'm Wonderful. surprised the most common response wasn't who the fuck is Rachel Reeves because that is the question on everyone's lips, I think. <laughs> I don't want to sort of read from this full article, but come back, coming back to it, right? This is where everyone's agreed that the schools have to collapse, yeah. right? The question is how many. We're negotiating how many schools collapse in the actual... In the, among the people who get to make the decisions as to whether or not the schools collapse, everyone agrees that at least some should collapse. Right. And... This is what makes, uh, you know, Raphael Baer's recent article, the Tories have failed, the British people do not want a smaller state after all, quite well. They want shoes. Infuriating. <laughs> this is, again, someone who was marched in lockstep against... Jeremy Corbyn gave me a heart attack. Yeah, this is the Jeremy Corbyn gave me a heart attack guy. He was going to rebuild the schools. He would have done that. Yeah. Why is doing this podcast made us all into Hafizes for the <laughs> dumbest punks in British media and politics? Well. Like, I can identify every guy. Like, I'm like the fucking, like, the Rainbolt Geo Guesser guy. Like, you name me a guy, and I can tell you what the fucked up thing is about that guy. <laughs> because, as Milan Kundera said, the struggle of man against government is memory against forgetting. Yeah, in that book, The Unbearable Lightness of British Concrete. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> oh, I think that might be the line of the episode. Yeah, yeah there we um, go. So, Bear writes, A substantial majority, including the 2019 Tory voters, agree with the view that Britain is broken and people are getting poorer and nothing seems to work properly. Mm. Uh, nothing wants to work true, anymore, not even a concrete. tends to reward incumbency. He goes on, Drill deeper into the data, and the mood reveals a more profound problem for the Conservative Party that has a suspicion of government intervention encoded in its ideological DNA. To which you have to remember, like, all of his friends, all of the people who, who lined up for Starmer, who say, oh, Starmer's going to get more left-wing in office, blah, 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 mm. don't understand that they have that encoded in their ideological DNA as well. They all do. And the small state impulse isn't shared by the public as Raphael Baer says, but it is fucking shared by him because he likes to talk about it. But as soon as the pro as the uh, uh, sort of the big state rears its head of actually happening, then he's all just getting heart attacks. The problems are bad, but their causes are very fucking good. <laughs> yeah, that's, true. that's fucking right. Let's when, when go. When has a politician ever gotten more left wing in office? Like may maybe Abraham Lincoln? <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, this is uh, again. This is. The idea of, um, of Starmer's going to get more left wing in office. He's actually going to secretly rebuild the schools. He's just saying he won't rebuild the schools because then the Tories will say, ah, he's going to spend all the money rebuilding the schools. You can't trust him because then your kids will live more, maybe. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Yeah. It, it's yeah. the, this is again comes back to like these people consuming this is nothing but a game, a horse race, a TV show. It's like it, it reality, it, it is for them. It's just they're not. Con they they love the TV show is the difference, right? And so mm -hmm. they love British their character. British people also do hate kids. It's like Starmer is their comfort <laughs> character, yeah. and so they have to do have headcanon about him, which is that he's secretly going to not let the bad stuff from the news With happen. British media going... logic, you can explain absolutely anything. Like you can be like, well, maybe collapsing schools is a good thing because Shamima Begum's school didn't collapse on her, and she joined ISIS. Think about that. <laughs> I think they will. They will just wind up going for the cheapest and most obvious solution here. Lots of shoring poles. Yeah. Lots and lots of shoring poles yep. in every classroom. Yep. 
it will look mm. like an Egyptian hypostyle hall of yeah, look, <laughs> right. No, it's going to look like a, a, a cheesecake factory in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, and not just schools, hospitals, universities, mm-hmm. the cheesecake factories defense. all. Wheeling, wheeling the, the, the gurney through a maze of shoring poles in every hallway. Oh, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> Very yeah. excited well, for that. Yeah, it's going to be like a slalom. <laughs> yeah. They said two shoring poles in every kitchen, two shoring poles in every garage. Yeah. And about about 35 in every classroom. Yeah. <laughs> One per, oh, that's shoring ratio per child uh, ratio. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, good yeah. as hell, baby. Yeah, there's so many yeah. shoring poles. Children have never been safer. Yes. <laughs> Well, right. no, no, you can't do a school shooting because the bullet will just rec- ricochet off all the poles. And, Look at us. Know. We're all the uh, the Warren Commission now. Yeah. No, <laughs> no one is prepared to, in Britain in the media to, to allow themselves to follow things to their logical conclusion, right? Like, like you were saying, Riles, about like everyone agrees that some of the schools have to collapse, but they won't say that out loud. It's just that everyone agrees that it would be unfeasible to repair all of the schools. Why not? You need all of the fucking schools and you need them to not collapse on the children. Therefore, however much it fucking costs, you have to repair all the schools. It's just, this is basic logic. It doesn't, it doesn't make any fucking sense. What, like, why, why do we live in this dream world where it's an option to not repair all of the schools? That However many schools are going to collapse on the children and kill them, that is the number of schools that need to be repaired by you. This is very simple to anyone who has a brain. We already came came up with Children a solution. We made into a kind of pate. We're gonna install a whole bunch of shoring poles. Oh wait, I'm just hearing from the treasury. The shoring poles are too expensive. Oh no! Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh the children are the shoring poles <laughs> now, baby. We're gonna use yeah, you gotta stand up and hold the ceiling. Call the children. <laughs> yeah, your atlas will be drafted Your atlas now. To stand in a stress position, holding up the ceiling. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're the bad kids. Bad kids hold up the school. Yeah. Oh, I would have. Yeah, I would have. I would have had shoulders like a goddamn Greek god. Yeah, yeah you'd be you standing there like Atlas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, I think that's about all we have time for today. Catherine so, Barbell uh, sings. I'm being for censored. Jack children. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, Alice, Liam, and Roz, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having oh, us. Yeah, thanks well, for having us on. It's a good time. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, thank you for listening to Well, There's Your Problem. My name is Riley. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, thank you very much for coming on and telling us about, uh, about Rack City today. And to our listeners, thank you very much for listening. This is a free episode, but there are bonus ones. They're $5 a month for a second episode every week. And then further episodes such as Britonology and Left Unread that Alice and I do about books. Mm. Uh, there's a Twitch stream Mondays and Thursdays, and you can catch that. And um, the theme song is Here We Go by Ginseng. You can listen to it on Spotify. Catch it early and often. Please subscribe to the Patreon so we can replace the roof of our studio. <laughs> Does this come out <laughs> right. on Monday? Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, if you're hearing this in the morning, you can come to our live show. <laughs> if you're in Philadelphia or can be there, <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> All right. If you're in so Philadelphia or the surrounding area. <laughs> yes. the The roof of the venue is not made of rack. That we know of. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 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 And they will see you there. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.